good. So he's got the lower fairing. Now we can match this up. Yes, and here's the piece oh, I have to fix also. Me. All right. Well, we've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on over here, baby? Is this the giant marble run? Wow, look at this. Don't fall over. Oh, look at this. Oh, looks like Luciano's winning that round. Oh, Luciano's winning. Oh, no. Joe Roselli got on at that. Look at that. He pulled out a win at the end. Oh, my goodness. Great job. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're going to use your Suzuki thing for it. Yeah. Ah! Same stuff. All right, so Mark bought some cans of... Primer seal of Rustoli. We're going to try this on the project. Of course, we're out of Duplicolor. Well, they were out in the store. They sold, yeah. they sold the Duplicolor, but yeah. not the primer sealer. This this part dried up nice. So that's. But of course, it's got to be wet sanded. Then I'll put a coat of this on this. The test of this is going to be if it melts the raw plastic. That's mm -hmm. see, like you got a crack here. I got to fix. Mm -hmm. so I'll fill that with CA. And right. by the way, these stickers were unbelievable to get off. Oh, really? Holy mackerel! These I can understand. I use that. But I used a half a pack of sandpaper to get them off. Unbelievable. So yeah, this, the piece missing. Okay. This is off the FZ six hundred. Okay, that's a has, staff airing. And it has the, it has the little lip. So I think. Okay, maybe we can cut, cut a, piece a piece out and then and graft it in yeah, there. Yeah, graft it in and then just carbon fiber it or whatever. Yeah. In the back and then I'll, I'll do this side and uh, that's my. That's my thing. Turn think, it this way. Is it cosmetic? I, it's yeah. it's just a cosmetic yeah. thing. It's not holding anything. Well, the windshield. Because yeah, yeah, if yeah. there's a lip here that the windshield... Yeah, you got to have a lip so the windshield kind of dives yeah, into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you leave it, leave the windshield too. Yeah. You know, it's because I got to be able to get in at the... Yeah, at the right angle and the right... And see if I can cut a piece of this out and graft it in there. Which And then if the paint is no problem, I'll get the decals off. These are these don't have clear over them, so I can get yep, them off. They'll come right off. We'll find out. One of the things I want to do is and the windshield. See, you might be able to use the windshield. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can clean it up after everything's done. With flits. Yeah. With flits. Take some 2,000 grit 2,500 sandpaper. I bet you could polish. It'd be this would be a good thing for flits to try yeah, it. Give it a try. It works on headlight rims. Great. And I wanna I wanna see if I can duplicate these two stickers. So they have gold. They have gold trim around them you can see it's in red you got a picture of it well we got a picture of it right now yeah gold around it and they're red so so mark came over tonight and it's this divot we have to fit into this is the repaired piece so you see if it fits you you can start manipulating it around flip it over and see what the joint looks like from the other side you got to be able to get the joint from the other side And see if the screws line up. Look uh, in the ballpark. And yes, they're very yes, they're very close. Very close. I think it's yeah. How do you like the way this came out with the? Uh, very, I got a I got a bondo it in a little bit there. Oh, that looks fantastic. But that's aluminum, you know. You know what that is? Cool. That's a that's a piece of this tubing. Oh, you put it in and then bond it around it. Yeah. No, CA. It's CA. solid CA. You. Wow. If you if you high side the bike, this will be in one piece. The this will wear out. The rest out. of it will go. I cleaned up your repair just so I didn't get us. Yeah. You know, I ran. Do you a like? Do you like the way that I was that correct? That was fine. Yeah. What? There couldn't I be any better. I was trying to figure out the best way. To but do this it. is important. If this didn't match, mm -hmm. or if you went to put that in and there was a big bulge there or something, mm -hmm. you're stuck. You're you're in big trouble. Yeah. And and there's a scoop that goes here, but it won't be in the way of of the repair. It looks like it's okay. Like it's fine. But I didn't want to go to where where this will be in a couple of days. This will have black paint on it. Mm -hmm. Then we'll leave the whole bike black. Until you're ready to mask out the paint job, the Walter Wolf paint yeah, job. And this, I gotta figure out this one. This is a round. Now, what is that supposed to be? A half a round? No, it's a full round. It's a full round, and then it gets it get. There's a a, a bar that goes across to the other one, so it's okay. A full, it's a full round, and it gets a screw through it. Maybe through. what you could do is get a washer that fits in here. Mm -hmm. Drill the hole the right size, epoxy the washer in there, mm -hmm. and then. You know what I'm saying? And repair the back. Yeah, and then you can build the back up with CA or with, uh, with anything once you get a washer in there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, 
we don't have the third screw, but these two are sitting just fine. And this one, the, the other part, there's no screw, there's no work to do on it. It's just cosmetic. Yeah. There's no uh, recreating parts of the, the part. No, just the, uh, just this. Yeah, no, no, I have the piece of tubing there on it. There's yeah, the piece the of tubing piece. right there. I don't think it's going to come out good. What do you mean you think it's going to come out? It's going to come out perfect. I know it's going to come out perfect. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think anything in this shop. <laughs> That's true. This is an amazing place. Everything everything looks like a turd when you bring it here and when you take it home. You win. It, it, well, you didn't win the contest last time. You got second place, so. Well, it was close enough. <laughs> but, it was close enough, right? Well, I'm curious to see if that windshield is going to be set. Oh, I think it will. You know, I got I, an extra windshield. Wait a minute. I got it. I got one out in the garage. That looks exactly like, actually, it looks like that. This one will clean up. I think I got to clean it first and then. So today we have one little project here that I thought would be worth doing today. It's a rainy day. I wanted to try to get this sanded out and test this new primer that Mark brought over last night. And I always do enjoy checking out new material. Now this, to be honest, I've never used the primer sealer. It's really important, I think, but again, this is all something that's yet to be proven. Whenever you have a sealer in the tile, it's probably real good for plastic. Maybe good for metal, but it's really almost a must when you're going to do a piece of plastic. The reason is as you sand through, and we will sand through in spots, and do repairs and whatnot like we did to the first part, what's going to happen? I want this to seal it up. Otherwise, you run the risks that the, that the plastic will eventually melt. Now, believe me, I've got a whole lot of different primers in the shop. And some of them have been very, very mediocre. Some didn't work at all. Some that I paid a lot of money for thinking they'd be a lot better. <laughs> really weren't. And this is the one I like to use on plastic. So this test, using a Rust-Oleum. Rust oleum is available in Lowe's, which always makes it a, a nice feature because we have a, a Lowe's very close to the house. Now, even though I've cleaned these before, that was a couple days ago, I want to start with as clean a part as I possibly can. And by the way, simple green. And there's also another degreaser that I bought a gallon of to do my driveway when uh, somebody who I won't mention any names dropped a gallon of oil in my driveway. And it worked great. And it was available at Harbor Freight. It's like simple green. It looks radioactive, in fact. Now, when somebody's new to the world of painting, one of the, the hardest lessons to learn, and you'll always learn it the hard way, as I do, have done, and I'm think most, I think most people have, is if you start with a part that's full of grease and silicone fingerprints, or if you don't wear rubber gloves and you have the grease from your hands on things, what always happens is you'll be somewhere in the middle of the paintwork, the sanding, and your sandpaper then grinds that grease down into the finish. That right now, at, it's right now at this point you have to kind of sit back and pay the price. Even if you think the part is clean, clean it again. This should be a relatively uh, simple sand out here, and we've done the other one already. But I do want to check that primer out, and my goal is by the end of the day to have both of these parts in what I hope is a final primer coat. Now another good tip, whenever you're using these sticky back discs, a lot of times, especially if they're fresh, what'll happen is when you go to take them off, they tear off a part of the piece, the foam base that's underneath it, and it can be a real problem. It can really be a problem. You ruin a tool that way. Now, depending on what glue is on there, what I found is, and it's not a, this is not a real high-tech thing, but that the, the heat softens the glue. In fact, we may need a little more heat for this. Oh, here we go. And then you can basically, as you see this contact cement coming off, the idea is, because we use a bucket of these every time we do a job like this, the, I want to put a new one on, but see now this, I still have a layer of that contact cement on, so the next one will just go right on top of that now. But using a little heat when you take it off, it saves the wear and tear on this piece, this foam rubber piece that's on the sander. Now another little tip, I and this is the kind of thing you learn real quick. A lot of times when you're using a heat gun, that end will get red hot. It'll really get hot. And you, what happens, you put it up on a workbench and there's some paper or a paper towel or something up there. 
or you touch it with your hands. What I did, I just put a, a little piece of tape around the cord and this keeps it out of harm's way while I'm working on the part. So the first step is this piece that Mark did the reinforcement on the back. He did, actually this part only has one reinforcement and one repair, but we're not going to be too crazy about that. I've got to sand this. I've got to sand off all the decals and there's a repair up here and I'll show how I do that little repair. Or just let's, let's say it this way, it stacks the deck that you're not going to have the paint crack further into the job. Now what, are that, what that's going to do, I hope, I'm going to be able to get this part relatively flat. You see it'll take the decals, most of it off, but then I have to do the final sanding by hand. Even though you take this decal off, that sticky material that's been in there 20, 30 years and it's under clear, the only way to really get that off is just grind it, sand it. I don't like to use the acetone on it unless I really have to because it really has a tendency at times to melt this plastic. Any old plastic, remember years ago they didn't have the modern plastics that they have, these, these old plastics tend to melt. Okay, now the next step on this, and this, this is now relatively flat, I'm going to take the tubing over to the little jigsaw, cut a little sliver of it, and using CA, get that right in place, and do the body work with CA pretty much similar to what we did. This looks like a piece of a lawn chair or something, but I always have a bunch of this tubing in my... Uh, my little inventory of stuff. Okay, we're using Brodac CA. The idea here is kind of a simple thing. We want to put a little bit of glue in here. This is thick CA. And now what I want to do is get this piece to sit down where the bolt is centered. And just leave enough of it sticking up. In fact, I can turn it this way. Make it even a little bit cuter. Now, hit that with a little kicker. That's going to dry. Now, the trick here is going to be, just wait. Let's see when it's, yeah, it's dry. Okay. And now fill in that gap around the bolt. I did the other one with no Bondo. In fact, there's no Bondo on this job at all yet. It's all CA which is a little more expensive, but it really makes <laughs> makes the quality of the job so much better. It's, it's not even a close choice. You let that sit. Now the thing is not to blast it with kicker, just put a, just a little bit. Let it sit 30 seconds there, it's already gone off. Once it's dry to the touch. And by the way, people that have never worked with CA, it's a, uh, a glue, you know, to, to be really simple, they've it was invented from for a totally different cause, but it works out perfectly for model airplane building or building anything from models, even model railroading they use it, any modeling. And it's an extremely good, uh, very unknown, uh, how would you even say it, that a lot of people don't even know you can do this. I have never seen anybody else on the internet do this except me. Now before I can go any further on this, I have to take the bolt out because what will happen, if not I'll grind the head of the bolt and these are very nice, uh, nicely, we'll polish these up for Mark before we, before we get, give him back his job. Nice button head screws. Anyway, what we did, we got this part level, now, we, now the rest of it is going to be all final sanding. Now just to mention something that I think I might have not put this on the video uh, presentations in a while. This is the, one of the tools that I find when I'm doing this kind of body work, restoration body work, super, super handy. These little pads that come off, this, uh, this is like a Velcro. You buy these, they're kind of expensive relative to regular uh, sandpaper, but they really do a great job. 
And what you do is you put them on three different ways because the only part that ever wears out, if you look at it close, you really only wear the tip out or mostly at the tip anyway. Now, it, what these are good for is I like to do, a, they get into nooks and crannies and corners and they're good. I like to do a final sanding on a whole part. In fact, before I forget, did not want to forget this. This is not, this is Brodac Thin CA. This is capillary. And if you look right here, there's a crack. Now, I think this motorcycle has been painted already. It's my feeling. Because when I looked at it, it comes up with two layers of, it, it has two paint jobs on it. I don't think the factory was big on doing two paint jobs. That's not the cheapest way to make motorcycles. Now, where the back is, and you can see why it did that, it's rubbing here. What I'll do is I'll take some of this, just in case that crack went all the way through. A little reinforcing on that won't hurt. Because it's capillary, it works its way in, and then it swells up. But anyway, to, to the real the real information that I think can serve everybody well, this is a tool worth having. And it puts just enough of a scratch on everything that the paint usually gets a good bond. That first coat of primer. Let's see, here's where it's good for getting little areas like that. So rather than just give everybody a headache with the sander, I'm going to finish sanding this. And then I'm going to detail sand it out as much as I can. And then we want to try that primer that Mark brought over. I'm always excited about trying new stuff. Okay, one of the parts <clears throat> that we still have to repair, I have this piece is broken away. And I'll show a real good way to, that I would repair it anyway. Some thick CA in there. I just happen to have some washers that are pretty much the right size. And you got to get that to stay in there. Hit that with a little kick. Let that CA kick off. And we can just build the back up with several layers of thick CA. And that part is in there. That really, <laughs> that really worked out pretty good. Now one final cleaning with prep wall and we'll go to, to check that and see which of the primers we like the best or probably it'll be a tie. I, there is a distinct difference between primer filler too, by the way. Something a lot of people don't understand. If you, if you have primer filler, there's going to be a lot of what I call talc or filler in it. It's not going to be uh, appropriate in some cases. It's probably good when you're doing a lot of body work, say, but on other projects where you're doing just a minimum of body work, that wouldn't be to your advantage, I don't think, anyway. But anyway, you probably could make all of them work. It's just that you want to make the one as easy as possible. Now, the test will be on the parts of this, and this definitely was painted over again. I can see the tape lines, and it's two colors of blue, and and it doesn't really matter. All that matters is now we don't want it to melt. It's the melting that's the problem. So I'm going to clean this up, dry it off, take it outside, and maybe it's still raining. It was raining. But, and then we'll see how this, if it's compatible. And again, you could paint two Ducati mirrors. One melts, one doesn't. You could do two. Honda 750 side covers are the worst. The side covers from those 60s and 70s bikes, and one will be bulletproof, one will melt, look like an alligator when you're done. Ready to test it out. Now I've already got the, the bottom painted, and the test is gonna be, we'll put on two coats nice and thin so it is Minimize the chance that we're going to get the, the thinner that's in the primer melt in the plastic. And then what we'll do is we'll wet sand it and put another coat on until we get a nice smooth finish. Okay, Mark, let's see if it's your lucky day here. We're going to find out very soon.
Yeah, this is 400 sandpaper. And I just went over this real quick with the uh, the port of cable sander, but now this is going to be the final. I want to, I want to put the next coat of primer on this. And what we're trying to do is build up a nice surface while that first part is drying. This is usually usually dries in less than a half an hour. While one part is drying, you can be working on the other part. And this is this is the one that's the duplicolor part. So we had no melting issues with duplicolor at all. I feel uh, well, I feel good about that anyway. Mark should feel good about it. What am I talking about? Anyway. A lot of times what happens is you're, you're tempted to skip a step, and when you skip a step, the final job always shows it. And the biggest thing here is to get all the edges radius. If you get sharp razor edges, what ultimately happens, and it's terrible, <laughs> and there's nothing you do about it, at that point in time, the paint starts peeling up. Anyway, this is when it starts turning into a labor of love. How many, how many coats of primer is it going to take to get a nice base coat on this? But Mark hasn't even bought the paint yet. He's got to pick up the paint. And this is going to be that uh, Walter Wolf paint job that he's mesmerized. It looked really nice, in fact, mesmerized by. Anyway, we're going to get a coat on this. And we got the repair done in the front, so... It's ready. That's ready for our next coat of primer. Now this quick test is going to be if I can go over the duplicolor with this without a problem. We'll find out right away. And sometimes it takes two, three, four coats to, to build up that nice smooth finish. You use up a lot of 400 sandpaper at this point in the game. That's for sure. But we will get it. So let me show one one problem you can have in a restoration. This is where they painted the second paint job. This is the tape line, as you can probably see. And you can see what's happened. The paint does not like to go over that tape line. Now, there's a simple answer for this, and we're going to do that, of course. The simple, simple answer is, see, over here we've got a lot of little air pockets I'm going to fill in. But this part's going to need a little more work. Now, this is the one that just has Rust-Oleum on it, but... What we'll do is we'll sand this down when it's totally dry and then put thin CA over this and build up a little like a bridge of thin CA over this and I may have to put a little more CA in here. It looks like there's little air bubbles which that ha that's what happens from the kicker. But that part, they, a lot of people would get to this point and really have a problem and not, not know how to correct that. And we can get that corrected relatively easily. So while this part is drying, the other part is drying, we have to go get my grandson and that's going to be it for today. But we got a lot done and these parts, it looks like, I'm, I'm evaluating this, it looks like this Rust-Oleum seal of primer will be fine too. But anyway, since we're not selling primer, but I can see there's a little issue it's got down there too. Um, no, we're going we're gonna to do a lot more sanding on that, that'll be... That'll be a subject for the next video. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching.